Hello, YouTube friends. What are you learning today that will help you better serve God? You know, I got to thinking about what's the purpose of life? Have you ever wondered, what, what's the purpose for your life? Why did God put you here in this world? Just to take up space? Are you what some of the globalist predator class would call a useless eater? No. No, my friends. God has a purpose for your life. So never let the things of this world get you down to the point where you feel like giving up. Like there's no hope. Like I might as well end it all, you know, commit suicide. Suicide is a very serious problem today. People go into drugs, they self destruct, they cut themselves, girls cut themselves. A guy will take a gun and blow his brains out. Uh, who was it? Tony Scott, the director, film director. Was it Tony Scott that jumped off the bridge, I think, in San Pedro, committed suicide? That was several years ago, I believe. I mean, Freddie Prince, remember him? From Chico and the Man. It was a show back in the 70s or 80s. He was a comedian, Freddie Prince. He ended it all. I guess he thought. Life was too difficult to continue going on, too painful. Yeah, life can be painful, can't it? How do you deal with that pain, though? There's a purpose in that pain that you experience, and you need to find what that purpose is so that you will grow and you get stronger as a result of that. Think of the Apostle Paul. Did he have an easy life? Did Paul have an easy life? No. Maybe before he came to Christ, he might have had it much easier, right? In favor with his fellow Jews, a master of the law, probably fairly well off financially even. But when he met the Lord on the road to Damascus, things changed and the Lord said, I, I want to, he's going to learn, Paul's going to learn what great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Yea, all that li will live godly in Christ Jesus, said Paul, will, not might, but will suffer persecution. If you're not suffering some persecution, you, you might well question, are you living godly? Are you living an uncompromising life? full of integrity, serving the Lord, refusing to lie or compromise your values or the commands of God. Yeah, a lot of that's going on today from the televangelist world, from the pastors who are caught in sex scandals. And you can go back to the 80s. I remember giving a speech called The Ethics of Persuasion in Televangelism when I went to the University of Pacific. Did pretty well. But because I had the lead in, in Brigadoon, uh, which they had turned into a movie starring Gene Kelly and Sid Carice and Van Johnson, I had a lot of lines to memorize, you know, and I, I just was overwhelmed uh, with learning my lines and the songs I had to sing and everything. And then I had this 10 minute communication analysis speech that I had to give. Well, I had to look to my notes a little bit. But I got most of it down, but it wasn't enough to get me into the nationals. I did okay, though. But getting back to what I'm talking about, your life has purpose, my life has purpose. I think it was the, the, the shorter Westminster Confession who said that said, the purpose of man is to enjoy God, to... to enjoy God and you know, to, to obey God and enjoy Him forever? Something like that. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, 13, it says that the whole duty of man, or the whole purpose of man, if you want to put it that way, is to fear God and keep His commandments. So, you can say, you know, the purpose of my life is to fear God. 
to fear him in a good sense, to fear him, not out of dread and of punishment so much as, as it is to respect him, reverence him, a holy reverence or respect, just like you might respect your parents when you were growing up. You honored them because you loved them. You respected them. You revered them. Oh, yeah, they had the power of the paddle. <laughs> they, could, they could punish you. They could ground you. They could mete out certain consequences for your disobedience and misbehavior. But I hope that wasn't the motivation for obedience. It should have been because you love them and honor them, and you don't want to do that which, which, which displeases them. Well, the same thing goes for our relationship to our Heavenly Father. You know, we look to God as one who loves us, who brought us into this world. That he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son who suffered on the cross for our sins that we might be delivered from the wrath to come from eternal death or damnation we don't know the agony that he went through but his purpose was to do the will of God to do the will of the Father he says I always do those things which please him not my will, he said, but thine be done, speaking to the Father. So, let us be conscious about this idea of purpose. Now, there's a story, I'm not sure what decade this was. It could have been in the 50s or 60s or 70s, the 1950s, 60s or 70s, I don't know. But in Biloxi, Mississippi, there's a 24-year-old dancer who despaired of her life, and she jumped from the wharf, I guess a bridge, into the water. And a young man saw her. I mean, she had no reason to live. That's why she did this, uh, or so she thought. And the young man saw her jump into the water, and he removed his jacket and jumped into the water to, to, uh, to save her, unmindful of the fact that he himself could not swim. Well, when he was gulping water and gasping for breath, this young lady grabbed him and safely and, and swam to shore and saved his life. And for the first time, she discovered her life had purpose and meaning. She saved another human being. Praise the Lord. I don't know if this girl was, I mean, most likely she wasn't a believer. But the Lord used her to save this other gentleman who may or may not have been a Christian. The point is that, you know, God has a purpose for everything. I think in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's a time and a purpose for everything under the sun. There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to mourn or weep and a time to laugh. time to sow and a time to pluck up that which is sown. You know, it's a time to sow and a time to reap, right? Just ask the farmer that. So, I want to encourage you today, if you're feeling down because of whatever, sickness, your health is bad, maybe there's a financial loss that you've suffered, you know, and money is a real thing that we depend on money to buy the necessities of life, food, clothing, things like that, and even shelter, although shelter is not so much a necessity as we often think. Because Jesus said, the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man hath no place to lay his head. And Paul said, having food and raiment, that is clothing, to therewith be content. Yeah. Can you have the same attitude that Paul had? Can you bring your mind to the level of your outward circumstances and condition? He says, I've learned whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Godliness with contentment is great gain, said the Apostle Paul. I know I'm mixing a lot of different ideas together today in this video, but hear me now. Look around you. Go out and help somebody today. 
Look at a situation. Maybe there's somebody that can barely get across the road. They're an elderly person. Go and extend a helping hand. Put your arm out there and let that old man or the old woman grab a hold of it and walk them across the street. Go visit somebody at a convalescent hospital. Go to perhaps a children's shelter and volunteer your time to some of those kids that might be orphans or in foster care, whatever reason they're there. It's probably a temporary situation. I know I was in a shelter when I was 13. I left my aunt and uncle's house and thought there was greener pastures in a foster home, I guess. But I was placed in this shelter for nine months waiting to get placed in a foster home. And things started out good. But then they, they got worse because I got that discipline from my aunt and uncle wore off, you know. And I ran away a couple of times. I even ended up in juvenile hall over a chess game. You can believe that. And that's another story for another time. But, you know, sometimes our life is a struggle to find meaning and purpose. But God is the one who gives every life meaning and purpose. And I think of that verse in Philippians 4, I think it's verse 13, where Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Maybe that's a verse for another time. We'll, we'll talk about divine possibility, you know. You can be so negative, always looking for reasons why something doesn't work. But let me tell you something. You need to look for the reasons why something will work. Be positive. You see a bad situation and you, oh, you're so negative. Try to, try to put a good construction on a situation. Because that's what love is all about. Love thinks no ill. Love is patient and kind. Right? So anyway, I don't want to go too long. How many minutes is this? Oh, it's a 12 minute video. That's not too long, is it? I try to keep them 5 to 10 minutes, but this one's 12 minutes. Sometimes it might be 15 or 20 minutes. I hope you don't mind. Be blessed today. Go out and do something good. But don't forget to spend some time with the Lord in prayer. Always be in an attitude of prayer. Paul says, pray without ceasing. Be thankful. Have an attitude of gratitude, as some of the gurus say. Have an attitude of gratitude. Be thankful for what you have, for your health, for your wealth, for the youth, for your intelligence. Be thankful. There's people that always, there's people out there who have it worse than you. All right, my friends, may the Lord richly bless you until we meet again. Thank you for.